Compliance, the final frontier. Tom Fox is the voyager of trekking through compliance. His mission? To explore the original series and seek out and share what it can teach you about compliance. Here's your host, Tom Fox. Trekking Through Compliance, Episode 56, Spock's Brain. In this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, we consider the episode Spock's Brain, which aired on September 20, 1968, and occurred on Stardate 5431.4. This is the first episode of the final season of Star Trek Season 3. Story synopsis. The Enterprise encounters an ion-propelled ship of unusual configuration, which then activates a transferal beam. The beam transports a mysterious woman onto the bridge of the Enterprise. Upon arrival, she stuns everyone with a gizmo on her bracelet. She examines the stunned crew on the bridge and appears to take a special interest in Spock, so much so, in fact, that she surgically removes Spock's brain, as McCoy and Kirk discover when they come to a short time later. Luckily, due to Vulcan physiology, Spock's brain can... Spock's body can be maintained alive mechanically while Kirk goes in search of his brain. When when the Enterprise follows the ion trail of the women's ships, they are led to Sigma Draconis system. Out of the three habitable planets, scanners detect none, which is capable of having constructed an advanced ion-powered craft. Planet 3 is low on the industrial scale, 4 higher, but six shows no signs of industrial development and indeed is in a glacial age. Uhura detects regular emissions of high energy from Planet Six in contradiction to its supposed primitive status. Playing a hunch, Kirk beams down with a landing party to Planet Six. Sigma Draconis Six is indeed in the middle of an ice age, but Kirk has no trouble locating inhabitants who attack them, believing them to be, quote, the others, end quote. When Kirk captures one of the attackers who calls himself a morgue and questions him, the morgue warns Kirk about the givers givers of pain and delight. Kirk asks morgue about females of his kind, but he is only met with befuddlement, much like a teenage boy. When Kirk asks the morgue to help find the others, the morgue runs away in terror. The landing party soon locates a dead and buried city and also discovers a trap elevator. Kirk and Bones beam down... Kirk has Bones beamed down with Spock's Spock's mechanically controlled body, then intentionally triggers the elevator, which takes them below ground. At the end of their downward journey, Kirk encounters the female and iMorg, Luma, and stuns her with a phaser before she can activate her bracelet. Questioning leads nowhere since Luma has the mind of a child. Spock makes contact with the landing party through a communicator, but before anything can be done, Kirk and his party are appended by apprehended by Kara, the iMorg leader. The landing party is then equipped with immovable belts capable of producing intense pain. In response to Kirk's questions about the whereabouts of Spock's noggin, Kara responds with deep philosophical statement, brain and brain, what is brain? Following this outburst, Bones assures Kirk that all of the iMorg have low intelligence and could not possibly be capable of removing a brain. The answer to this riddle is discovered when Kirk and the crew overpower their guard and follow Spock's instructions to the central controller, which is now actually housing Spock's brain. Here they find Kara, who immediately immobilizes them with their pain belts. Kirk uses the remote control to command Spock to grab Kara's wrist and release the button, hit the release button on the bracelet. Spock's brain informs Kirk via communicator that the iMorg have been able to gain temporary understanding of ancient knowledge from a machine called the Teacher. Kirk forces Kara to put on the Teacher, and she uses her newfound sophistication to level a phaser at them. Scotty pretends to feign, and Kirk grabs the phaser away from her. McCoy then uses the Teacher and discovers how to perform a brain transplant. He surgically restores Spock's brain to his mechanically sustained body using a tri-laser connection and a sonic separator, just before the knowledge's three-hour period is exhausted. Luckily, Spock is able to provide some assistance to the procedure after McCoy manages to reconnect his vocal cords. Kirk then informs Kara that the iMorg will have to move to the surface and live as the morgue do. 
She's not too thrilled by that prospect, but Kirk does at least offer some Federation assistance. Fun fact. Um, this episode is often cited as the worst episode in the entire oeuvre of Star Trek TOS, although it is not my candidate for the worst. Unfortunately, that's coming. The authors of the guidebook Star Trek 101 apply the episode's title, Spock Brains Award, to the worst episode on each series voted by fans. Co-producer Robert Justman described the episode as being the, quote, late lamented, end quote. In his autobiography up till now, William Shatner joked that the the plot of the episode is a tribute to NBC executives who slashed the show's budget and placed the show in an undesirable time slot, leading to its eventual cancellation. So, uh, what are the compliance takeaways? Before we get there, we do have to acknowledge that this episode really is just terrible. And indeed, season three starts in a, a very fast downward spiral. This is all due to NBC, who, although they brought Star Trek back for season three, cut the budget and brought in Freddie Friedberger uh, to produce the series. If you are a TV aficionado, you will recognize that name from the Wild Wild West, but he was certainly not a competent Star Trek producer. So what are the compliance takeaways? Well, how do you channel compliance passion? Uh, Very early in the episode when uh, Kirk discovers Spock's brain is gone, he is passionate that he is going to find his friend's brain. Uh, So how do you uh, translate passion? Because the compliance practitioners I know are very passionate about compliance. Two, what do you do when you're facing intransigence? Uh, Clearly, the iMorg, most obviously Kara, do not want Spock's brains removed. So what do you do as a compliance practitioner when you're faced with intransigence? And then finally, what skills do you have on your compliance team? It turns out that they need the skills of a trained surgeon to restore Spock's brain. I hope you'll join me tomorrow when we take up the Enterprise incident for our next episode in Trekking Through Compliance. If you enjoyed this episode of Trekking Through Compliance, you can help it grow by sharing it with the biggest Trek fan you know. 